Hi guys, today we're going to be taking a look at the new Asus Maxima 7 Ranger. So this board is of course from the Republic of Gamers line and it features the new Intel Z97 chipset. Now this is the first time that they've actually used the Ranger moniker and this board is going to actually sit just below the Hero both in pricing and specification. So Ranger is actually the most aggressive price to performance board which uh, you know it kind of brings the style and the finesse from the Republic of Gamers uh, within reach to those that previously couldn't quite afford the Hero. Maxima 7 Ranger is a stylish motherboard which is furnished with the traditional black and red theme. Casting a brief look over the board reveals plenty of interesting and useful features which are sure to appeal to both gamers and hardware advocates. So Ranger is priced at a mere £130 in the UK. Unfortunately though, it looks as though it's going to be exclusive to Europe, so you guys in the US may not see it hit the shelves. But anyway, I think this board, you know, particular board is going to really surprise quite a few enthusiasts since you know, diving into the Republic of Gamers line generally does hit your pocket quite hard. So we're now going to go in, do an unbox, and then we're going to take a good close look at the actual board itself. If you are actually interested in the performance, please head over to the link in the description, which will be appearing very soon. Right guys, so to start with, we'll do a quick unbox on the Ranger. As you can see, it's from the Republic of Gamers, so we've got it inside a very nice red box. We've got the supporting features running along that bottom edge. Support there for Intel's fourth and fifth generation of CPUs. The Z97 chipset is a feature on this board. We've got the Nvidia SLI AMD Crossfire support support for 4K and also the Windows 8.1. Now with this being Republic of Gamers, we've got a, of course this a folding lid. And there you can see we've got further details regarding the fundamental features. And then we've got a diagram of the Ranger and the various features pinpointed. And flipping that box over, over on the back we've got some further details regarding the technical specifications. Right, so jumping inside the box we've got First of all, the motherboard inside an anti-static bag. Take this plastic tray out. And underneath there, we've got the bundled accessories. So just run these through now. We've got uh, four SATA cables, which are SATA 6G. Got a flexible NVIDIA SLI bridge. Got the rear IO shield, which is nice, that's black. Got the Q-Connect, that just helps you to uh, pair up the cables running from your case. Of course we've got the driver CD with the uh, software and a case badge too. Whoops, that's a bit stuck. Let's put that back on. Uh, there you go, we've got the, uh, the hard drive stickers just to help you um, label up your hard drives, keeping track of those a lot easier. We've got the uh, door hanger, which is uh, do not disturb in case you're in any gaming sessions. And then uh, we've got the user guide, which as you can see, is rather extensive. So guys, here's our Ranger motherboard, and it follows the standard ATX form factor. And as you can clearly see, the board is adorned in that typical ROG colour scheme of the red and black. Those of you guys who are passionate about the styling on the board will be pleased to know that Ranger features a smooth matte black PCB. We're going to move in for a closer look at the features now and our socket is of course LGA1150 which supports Intel's fourth and upcoming fifth generation of CPUs. Now the power delivery is digital and that's via DigiPlus 3 and we have a semi eight phase power design and that comprises of four PWM drivers, eight MOSFETs, eight chokes and eight capacitors. And you can see those chokes around the heatsink and those are alloy on the Ranger, but Blackwing on the Hero. And this is one of the uh, cutbacks that they've actually made in order to make the board cheaper. And those capacitors are 10K black. They're gonna offer up to 10K hours of usage. You can see we've got some substantial heatsinks covering the MOSFETs, but uh, they are not joined together. And behind those heatsinks, we've got eight pin power for the CPU. And in this area, we've also got the dual fan headers for your air cooling or ALCs. Moving to the memory, we have dual channel DDR3 support, giving compatibility for up to 32 gig and 3200 on the frequency. And in this corner, we have some overclocking features such as the uh, start and the smaller reset button right next to it. We've got the LED debug as well to help 
diagnose any issues on post. You can obviously get those uh, codes in the instructions manual. Also in this region is MemOK, which is an exclusive feature for ASUS, and uh, that helps you to uh, boot to a fail-safe compatibility for the memory. And next to the 24-pin power, we have the USB 3 header. Now most Z97 boards offer SATA Express functionality, but ASUS have actually chosen to omit this from their ROG series. And they've chosen to go with just SATA and M.2. So we have six SATA 36G ports, and the M.2 socket is actually located just above the PCI Express lanes. Now M.2 is very new to the market, and in fact there is only one manufacturer, that's Plexter, who currently have drives available to buy today, but there are other manufacturers which are currently developing them. And this new interface is much faster than SATA and it's going to offer you transfer rates of up to 10 gig. On the other side of those SATA ports we have a large heatsink which covers the Z97 chip. Now running along that bottom edge of the board we have a button called Keybot. Now this feature allows you to apply macros and functions to a standard keyboard. And to get this all you need to do is plug your keyboard into a dedicated USB port hit that keybot button which then activates the microprocessor on the reverse of the board and then with the software you can pretty much apply macros and functions to that keyboard so you can perhaps uh, use multimedia functions or assign shortcuts and I don't know about you guys but I think this is a really impressive feature to have Next up we have the expansion slots and uh, the two red ones there are PCI Express 3.0 x16 and when they're both in use, it's going to drop down to X8. At the bottom, we have a single PCI Express 2.0 X16, which operates at X4. And then additionally, we have a trio of PCI Express 2.0 X1 slots. Now, both NVIDIA SLI and AMD Crossfire are fully supported on Ranger. Now, audio is an aspect which ASUS clearly see as an important feature to integrate onto their ROG motherboards and Ranger has numerous high-grade components in order to deliver top-class performance. So Ranger uses what is called Supreme FX 2014. So we have ELNA Premium Solid Caps. We have Sonic Sense Amp, which detects and modifies headphone impedance. We have physical PCB isolation to prevent EMI. And lastly, we have a sound stage button where you can switch between different audio profiles on the fly. Okay, lastly then guys, we've got the rear input output panel and from left to right we've got the PS2 keyboard mouse, two USB 2 ports, an optical SPDIF, a HDMI port which incidentally gives you that 4K support. Next to that we've got even more video out, D-Sub, DVI and then next to that we've got the USB BIOS flashback button which a uh, really handy tool, uh, you know, you don't need to have the monitor, the graphics card, or the memory in order to flash your BIOS. Next to that, we've got a selection of USB 3 ports, four of those. And then we've got the Gigabit LAN, which is the RJ45. And then we've got the Audio Hub, which works in conjunction with that Supreme FX. So guys, that concludes our look at the new Maximus 7 Ranger. Hope you found this video useful. Let me know what you guys think of this new board. Personally, it's one of my top picks simply because it crams so many decent features in and for the price of just £130 you can get yourself a Republic of Gamers board so you've got all the features there and you've got the great performance. Now the only drawback with all of these Z97 boards is the very fact that the best chip that we can actually get as of today, May 2014, is the 4770K and so the Haswell refresh kit isn't quite ready yet and the fifth generation is even further away. And so Z97 is really going to be for you guys that perhaps on Sandy Bridge or Ivy Bridge still, and so you need that upgrade path. Or you could even be wanting just to get ready for the new kit which is coming very soon. And so guys, if you are after the actual performance of this board, please head over to the link in the description, as that link will be there very soon. Uh, thanks for taking the time out to actually watch this video, and I'll be back very soon with another one.